Well, uh, woo, happy new year, everyone, and here's some great news to report as we turn the corner of 2013. Idle, new, idle no more, hashtag idle no more. You may not have heard about this yet. It started in Canada, and uh, happy new year. This is from www.cbc.ca by the community team posted today. And I'll just do a quick overview. The movement is here. The time is now. Idle no more. This may be the beginning of a true, quote, civil rights movement for First Nations people. And, you know, Russell means God rest his soul. The Republic of Lakota was only the beginning. Idle no more. New York City, Times Square, 12.30, that's yesterday, by Pretty Blue Sky at Karun Karionawa. So this is a blog, so I won't read the whole thing, but um, it's cbc.ca news, your community, 2012. The past few days have been especially busy for Idle No More, as the burgeoning movement has made headway into other countries. A number of protests in Canada and in the U.S. over the weekend fed into a bump in social media traffic under the movement's hashtag, Hashtag I no more. On Sunday, at a Wapiskat chief, Teresa Spence's hunger strike. Whoops. Oh. Stretched into its 20th day as she continues to call for a nationwide nation to nation meeting that would be First Nations to Nation of Canada meeting with Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Spence's TP near Parliament Hill where she has lived since early December, has managed to attract several other politicians. Former Conservative Prime Minister Joe Clark, who visited on Saturday, called Spence's vision humble and achievable. Over a dozen NDP and Liberal MPs met with her on Sunday. There you go. There's the TP on Parliament Hill in Ottawa. Very glad Joe Clark and National Chief Atleo visited Chief Spence Saturday evening via at Pretty Mosquito. That here's the contributor. Now in its 21st day, Spence's approach, which has added some urgency to the broader movement, has lasted as long as a successful hunger strike staged by Senator Jacques Hebert. Jacques Hebert, not Hebert who starved himself in the lobby of the Senate 26 years ago to save the Catamavic Volunteer Youth Program. Spence's supporters hope for a similar result in her case. Okay, so we'll go on. Uh, if Stephen Harper made time for Justin Bieber, he should make time for us. There you go. He should make time for Teresa Spence. There you go. Bieber rally <laughs> and some comments below. Meanwhile, weekend protests across Canada included a blockade of the main rail line between Toronto and Montreal. Demonstrations were also staged south of the border in Oklahoma, Washington, Cincinnati, and New York City. The idle no more hashtag also gained steam in a Canada-wide Twitter trend that lasted well into Monday morning. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. These protesters are blocking the main rail line there between Toronto and Montreal. Here's some Coast Salish people. Prince Rupert. RT at Joanna Larson in Prince Rupert today. Over 300 by Yukon Roberta. Melinda Rook. <clears throat> oh, that's a nice one. This is uh, Idle No More, Vancouver, BC, Canada Today. Chief Theresa Spence, we got your back. Looks like they do. I'll go on. So you can go on and look at the rest of this. It, as I say, it's a blog. Now we'll go look at a couple of other stories. We can point out it's cross border. Indian Country Today, Media Network.com. The extent of the 300 plus members of Denver's Indian community who participated in the round dance was apparent from an upper tier of the Cherry Creek Mall in Denver. Look at that! Look at that! 
That was on December 29 in support of Idle No More by Carol Berry. We are all related. <laughs> there we go. We are all related. Round Dancers Insist at Idle No More event in Colorado. Yesterday by Carol Berry. Drum beats echoed through an upscale Denver mall as at least 300 round dancing and singing should be needed. People showed their support for the Idle No More movement among First Nations people of Canada who have pressed for honoring treaties, preserving natural resources, and meeting with the Prime Minister over the erosion of Indigenous rights. Harper's been stomping all over what had been in the past very strong sustainability rights in Canada. Members of the Denver Indian community are also supporting a hunger strike now in its third week by Teresa Spence, chief of the Attawapiska First Nation in northern Ontario, who has been urged by other First Nations and government representatives to end the strike she undertook to force a meeting on Native rights with Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Although peaceful, the Denver flash mob event December 29 was a forceful presence that prompted Nick LeMasters, general manager of the mall, to state that it was a disruption to shoppers. And the mall was not a forum for folks to convey their message. Well, that's Denver, right? The round dance was a forum for people to remind others that borders don't separate Indigenous peoples. And although political, the event was also sort of a family affair initiated by four cousins active on the powwow circuit. One, Katrina Hermini Horses, Oglala Lakota, Cheyenne Arapaho Taos Pueblo, Muskoki, and Ojibwe. So she's got lots of amazing heritage. Fifteen of Denver has a brother and friends in Alberta, and she has attended a number of powwows in Canada. It affects my family and friends up there, their treaty rights, lands, and water supply, she said. The flash mob was, mob was organized by Natalie Goodluck Locust, Navajo, Oglala, Lakota, Northern Cheyenne, Cherokee, 19, who said, We're just cousins who thought we could help. The other cousins were Taryn Sansi Waters, Cheyenne, Oglala, Lakota, Cherokee, 21, and Cheyenne Birdshead, Cheyenne, Arapaho, 17. The four cousins who planned the round dance were traditional, wore traditional dress before the event, and they checked the numbers of those planning to come. 437 of about 300, of whom about 300 participated. They are from left seated Katrina, her many horses, and Natalie, good luck locust. Standing behind. From left are Cheyenne Birdshead and Terrence on Sea Waters. Photo by Carol Berry. This just started out as something that sounded cool, but we all decided it was a good thing to stand up for, Good Luck Locust explained, stressing that the U.S.-Canada border doesn't separate us from other Indian people, a sentiment echoed by Birdshead who said, we just kind of want to support all the Indian people. The event's meaning went deeper than transborder kinship because it also spanned the ages and seemed to revive a tradition of activism. I'm glad we were able to come together as a community and not just for us. For the whole picture, we're all Indian. I'm sure Canada would do it for us. And youth involvement, we're all young. Our ancestors had to fight for us to be Indian, and we're still fighting to be Indian, Waters said. And you know, in Canada, First Nations have come into a strong empowered sustainability until Harper. So um, we're going to really hope that this is the beginning of something wonderful. Now let's see, I have one more I wanted to show you. There we go. From London. From ifpress.com ifpress.com First Nations by David Gow, Courier Press. This um, I believe this is out of, I'm not sure what this is, out of Courier Press. I think that's actually out of Toronto. This. Idle No More Movement Goes International. That's from yesterday. There's a picture of the author, David Gao. Idle No More protesters from Walpole Island are shown in Algonac, Michigan on Sunday. That's in Michigan. Native and non-native rights have been violated. Look at all the different gathering of different peoples and different bands and tribes coming together. 
About 100 peaceful marchers and drummers from Walpole Island made the First Nations Idle No More movement an international phenomenon. After holding a demonstration at the Walpole Island border crossing for most of the day on Sunday, the rally went across the border to Algonac, Michigan, where demonstrators waved flags, chanted, and banged on drums as they marched down the main street in Algonac and then held a ceremony in the nearby plaza parking lot. While he shied away from calling it a protest, Walpole Island's George Henry said the rally was to make people aware and educate them about what the Canadian federal government is doing. We want to do all of this in a good way, Henry said. And there's a bit, this, uh, this was the first rally believed to be the first Idle No More protest held outside of Canada. Henry said, it's not a Canadian or American issue, but an international one. The North American Indian considers himself or herself to be part of Canada, the United States, and Mexico, Henry said, noting that the Jay Treaty allows North American Indians, First Nations, the right to freely trade and travel across the border. And the oh, I'm sorry, I probably won't say this quite correctly, but I'm Joanan uh, I didn't, sorry, I apologize, First Nation, has been blocking a section of the CN Railroad in Sarnia, Michigan, since December 21. Additionally, various protests have taken place and Idle No More flash mob gatherings have also occurred over the holidays in malls across Canada. So this, <laughs> there we go, oh, and one more thing I wanted to show, going a little bit further in this blog, is this is actually now a world concern. People are commenting about this from all over the world. Going back to the first article from your community, CBC Your Community blog. This is that was at Eaton Center. Messages of support have also came in from people all over the world, like the Warabinda community in Queensland, Australia, where a small group of men dedicated a spirit gathering song to protesters in Canada. Listen to your tribal voice. Idle no more, they shout at the end of the dance. And uh, there they are. Gisborne, New Zealand. Holy, look at this. Indigenous peoples all over the world. And this woman, the message is spreading and you do not stand alone. Idle no more. Support from Bulgaria and India. So, and here's these children from in Mexico. Indigenous people in Mexico. The movement is here. The time is now. Idle no more. We are all related. Aho. Happy 2013.